so in my perpetual struggle to keep up with my YouTube backlog of videos, I'm going to give just a very, very brief uh, video log on John Wick 3, John Wick Chapter 3, Parabellum. I know I'm a week behind on this. I did see it uh, last weekend. Thought I'd just give out some of my thoughts on this installment and the trajectory of the John Wick franchise at this point. I thoroughly enjoyed Chapter 3 quite a bit. It is relentless. The action is as spry and as effective as ever. The choreography in this movie is beyond astonishing. Keanu, for the most part, is front and center in all of these battles, conveying the constant struggle that John goes through. Yeah, it's worth it just for the visceral gut punches that are these action sequences alone. It starts right out of the gate with, you know, this showdown in the New York Public Library where John is left with nothing but a book to defend himself with and somehow makes that the most uncomfortable and unsettling and gruesome way to die. Everything is a weapon in this universe, ranging from knives to books to horses kicking you in the face to attack dogs. I mean, it's, it's just amazingly creative with regards to how many different ways they can structure the same type of action sequence in which John Wick gets his ass handed to him somewhat, but then ultimately puts a beat down on someone. Keanu, I think, has settled into a very good niche here. I've always kind of been a Keanu fan, even in his not so stellar turnouts, such as being in Bram Stoker's Dracula, or Constantine or other uh, movies to that effect. I still enjoyed Keanu in those movies because at least it seemed like he was going for broke. Like even if he can't really convey much breadth or depth in certain roles, you at least got the sense that he was having fun being on certain films. Here in this particular franchise, you get the best of both worlds. He is diving deep into this character, trying to present as relatable but still as scary and intimidating a presence as he can and it seems like he has a lot of fun doing that and it, it's conveyed really well throughout this series and the uh, chapter three is no exception to this rule he revels in being this dark brooding haunted person and it's convincing and he looks good in the action sequences throwing down with actual trained martial artists throwing down with uh, mark dacascos one of my personal favorites from Brotherhood of the Wolf. That might have to be a guilty pleasure treasure someday, because I still do guilty pleasure treasures every once in a while. But yeah, Keanu rocks in this, Mark Dacascos rocks in it, uh, Halle Berry is really good in the brief uh, section of the film that she's in, in which she is this quasi, this very reluctant ally to John in his quest while he takes a bit of a hiatus to Casablanca. Ian McShane and Lance Reddick return and they are just as sophisticated and cool as Winston and, uh, oh man, I can't remember Lance Reddick's name in this movie, but you know, you know, the concierge, the guy at the front desk who always likes to uh, put up the dog in the kennel whenever John's in town. There are some expected twists with regards to John's interactions with Winston specifically in this movie. I'm sure you could probably see that coming from a mile away. It's still fun because Ian McShane and Keanu do play off of each other very well with regards to this feeling each other out, trying to assess where each the other person is at mentally, emotionally at that time, because it's been a rough couple of weeks. Again, keep in mind, these movies are actually just spanning a couple of weeks in their universe's timeline. The locations are just as vibrant. New York is just this neon blitz of a city that is still, you know, even after chapter two, they still find really decadent and effective ways to shoot uh, the finale that takes place within this, essentially this glass top floor penthouse. All the walls, all the floors are see-through glass. It is really fun and it, it got me like really hooked into the sequences that were taking place in that in that setting because just from a filmmaking standpoint I was like what tricks did they employ to make sure that reflections and flares off the lens and things like that don't become such a factor it's so beautiful if I were to have one gripe with chapter three it's that 
I know there's going to be a chapter four. This movie, while it has some pretty good conclusions to certain aspects of the mythology and characters, it's building up for another installment, certainly. And I'm kind of, I was kind of hoping it would be just a trilogy. Not that I don't think chapter four wouldn't be a great film or that they wouldn't find some great creative uh, new ways to film action or to have really tense and visceral action sequences. But I don't know just how much more of the mythology there is to explore before it gets to go into too hokey. Because the John Wickiverse has always kind of functioned under the idea that this is all a hidden society of assassins, that there's so many like continental head bases posted throughout the world, that these assassins operate just all around. Like you could be standing next to an assassin at this very moment in in Washington Square Park or on your flight to Bermuda or wherever is that anyone in this universe could just turn out to be an assassin at the drop of a hat. And that worked. That worked really well in Chapter 2 especially. It worked pretty well here in Chapter 3. But it was here in Chapter 3 that I started to kind of note like, okay, how much further can we take this myth mythology that they haven't already taken it to some extremes? They bring in this character, um, an adjudicator, who represents the interests of the High Table, who are the main kind of operators of this whole assassin world. I'm guessing Chapter 4 is going to go to the point where he's going to take on the High Table themselves, and it better be a pretty grand menagerie of folks sitting at this High Table for me to be blown away by it, is all I'm saying. It's just that I feel this concept that really wasn't toyed with too much in the first John Wick. That was very straightforward, simple revenge film that hadn't yet given us a peek into the more elaborate world of these assassins, aside from that first Continental Hotel and the sequences that took place there. I don't know how much more you could mine from this idea of the world of the high table aside from just showing the high table in this upcoming sequel in chapter four, which maybe then that'll be the proper conclusion, but you never know, they, they might continue to expand outward. And while it was kind of cool to see John Wick in different locations, such as in an arid desert in Casablanca, I, w I thoroughly enjoyed the movie, but the last minute or so when it's blatantly opening things up for another sequel, I kind of just felt like, I think we've said all we need to say about John Wick. I, I appreciate my time I spend in the John Wickiverse. I, I love the first movie. I thoroughly enjoyed the second movie, blew the first movie in terms of its scope and its ambition out of the water. And chapter three is another solid kind of stepping stone from chapter two into new realms and into new crazy heights of action. But man, how much higher can John Wick soar in that regard? I guess chapter four will tell us, but I hope it, I hope it sticks to landing. And I hope that is it. Chapter three, I was kind of banking on being the finale to everything. Like I said, while certain elements of the character and his world felt like they had kind of reached their penultimate moment in this movie. There's still more to tell, apparently, and I just hope the next installment does stick that landing effectively. Um, if you haven't gone out to see the movie yet, by all means, go do it. It is well worth ticket price. I think it's amazing that this movie has already kind of made back all its money. The fact that its opening weekend surpassed the original John Wick's total box office, I think. There's something special about this particular franchise, and I'm glad Keanu has found this successful kind of franchise to anchor himself to that has kept up a consistent level of high quality with its pacing, with its world building, with its action sequences, and with his character development. If we have to have another John Wick installment, so be it. I look forward to it with bated breath, but, you know, all good things must come to an end at some point. Maybe the best story has yet to be told. Oh, and uh, P.S. Great action sequences with dogs. Between John Wick's dog, Halle Berry's two dogs, and Jon Snow reuniting with Ghost on Game of Thrones last weekend, it was just a great time last weekend for dogs in all kinds of genres. Rough, rough.